before I came to Paradise, I lived in San Lorenzo, California, and I lived here on this property for the last 30 plus years. I'm retired, but I am safety director for the Paradise Post and Paradise Printing Company, and I'm currently part-time employed by Northern Recycling Waste Systems, and I operate the, uh, uh, I collect people's money down at Old Durham Wood when they bring in their green waste yard. They go to work at seven o'clock in the morning. So I got up at, I usually get up at five. I left this house, what was here, at five, about six o'clock. I went down to our office on American Way, picked up the money and drove down to um, the, sh the shed that I work in down at Old Durham Wood. And when I got there, I, at 7 a.m. I opened the door and I saw the plume of smoke. So I happened to have a scanner in my truck. I turned on the scanner and, uh, and I heard that the fire was in Polga at 200 acres and they were evacuating Concow and it was about, seven, about five after seven. And by seven, so I called my wife and I said, get the car out of the garage, open the garage door, because I knew that they were probably gonna be turning the power off pretty soon. Or, and so she opened the garage door and got the car out. And within 15 minutes, fire was in paradise behind Feather River Hospital. And I told her to, you know, grab some of our, our paperwork and stuff. And I would come up and we needed to evacuate. And so I came up Neil Road and, I met her at the Kmart parking lot, and by the time I got here, about, about 8 o'clock, uh, the roads were just gridlocked in almost in every direction. They hadn't started contra flow yet, but uh, so I met with her at Kmart just down the street, and we came back here to the house. And we had three cats, and I tried to wrangle two of them, but I couldn't. I only had one carrier, and I couldn't catch them, and so we let them go. and. Uh, and we took two vehicles and, and we headed out and I had to go break off from her and go down into the, by the police station in the little town, pick up my daughter. And uh, we left this house at eight o'clock and there was fire in the neighbor's yard. And uh, it took us uh, about five hours to get out. We drove through flame and, you know, she was sent, they closed down Clark Road and she was sent down Foster Road and came out on Wayland on to Neil and I picked up my daughter on Black Olive and we went down the Skyway. And we, uh, for some reason we turned to go down Neil and then we were in gridlock on Neil uh, before we got to Theodore on the Ridge. And we were just absolute standstill for 45 minutes or more. And the fire started coming towards us. People were getting out of their cars and running. And, and uh, it was pretty horrific. Favorite thing to do here in Paradise? Um, you know, I, I volunteer uh, up until this year, I was on the board of directors of Gold Nugget Museum and, and I like promoting shows and things. So I would put a Dutch oven cook-off on every year to raise money for local nonprofits. And uh, I volunteer at the uh, Paradise Performing Arts Center. And uh, I really enjoy doing lights and working on the technical aspects there. Uh, it's just, it, it's, it's exciting to take an empty space and create a facade and create a whole environment and then have some kind of magic happen. So currently uh, with some of the changes and the former manager who left uh, uh, the area and he lost his home here too, Kent, and he went back up to Washington State. So I'm currently managing the uh, Paradise Performing Arts Center for the board of directors and I'm, uh, you know, getting ready to rebuild my home. You know, this is where I've uh, been here since 19, uh, 1981, and uh, you know this is home. Uh, it's it's uh, it's just where I live. This is where I want to stay. And so I'll build back. You know, is it, I'll build back my forever home. This will be where I'll. This is to be it. This is it. I'm not going nowhere. You know, just the community. What the the greatest loss other than my stuff. The stuff is stuff, you know, my house and my tools and, and all that. Um, it's, it's the community, you know, and some of it's here still, you know, seeing Marshall at the lumber yard and, and, and the checkers in the, in the grocery store and, and the tellers at the bank, you know. Uh, these are people I've had relationships with for the last 20 plus years or more. And, and that's what I miss and that's what I look forward to coming back and, because a lot of them are coming back too. So that's, you know, it's, 
It's reestablishing the community. This is a, a wonderful community to live in. The biggest challenge I see as somebody that used to work in construction is going to be getting through the permitting process and the inspection process. I think the bottleneck is going to be with the town. I mean, all of the cleanup that's being done, it's being done by the feds and the state and whoever. Uh, and they're going to mobilize and they're going to do what they do and they're going to get that done as quickly as they can. I think the next dilemma is, you know, we're a little town, no matter whether they outsource it to a, a profit-centered company or whether they use uh, the help from other cities that are offering to help us, uh, it's going to be overwhelming. What are you going to do when there's suddenly a hundred building permits turned in in one week? We used to have like maybe 20 a year and now they're, you know, they're over over 10,000 homes and businesses that are gone. They're all gonna be required permits. So I think that's gonna be the bottleneck. The help would be that if the state, the city, and the county would all get together and, and relax some of the codes and some of the stuff. If some of this money that's being given to these foundations and, and uh, through FEMA and what have you, uh, why don't they come in and underwrite, I'm just gonna probably cost me $20,000 or more for building permits, you know? Uh, I'd sure like to use that, put in hardwood floors or some amenities into my new home rather than have to just spend it on permits. So, you know, if you have a sense of community the way I did and, and uh, you know, if, it, if it's your community, then be a part of it, you know, and don't be afraid. I mean, uh, I don't think that, like, um, I wouldn't be afraid about not being able to get insurance. I wouldn't be afraid of fire coming again. It won't be anytime soon. And going forward, there's got to be changes in how we manage the forest, uh, our, our, you know, our properties. I mean, we've learned a lot over the years. And so uh, I know those changes are going to come about. So I'd just say, you know, go for it. If this is your home, and if, this is, if you love it here like I do, and my wife does, then come on back. You know, it's going to be different. We're all going to have view lots. But, you know, th there's some excitement in that. I can have a garden. You know, when I bought this house years ago for these trees are all as big as they were, um, the, the original guy that built this place in the 60s, he had little fruit trees over in the side of the yard here. You know, I'm gonna put fruit trees in. I'm gonna plant dogwoods. I might have a fir or a redwood. You know, I'm gonna put back what I want. I sure don't need digger pines, and I'm not gonna plant any, you know? So, so it's gonna look different, but I'll have solar. I've been, Oh, it scared me. I'll be able to <laughs> be able to, uh, you know, have a garden. Uh, so I'm excited about about you know, and that's I, I think I would tell people you know, um, think about what the positive things that are going to come out of this. You know, it's going to look different, and if you can if you can deal with that, you can make it look the way you want. You know? yeah. So that's what I'm going to do. Mm -hmm.